Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. So probably the big question is, who cares about rocks? There's just stuff underneath the earth, right? No, because we can get cool stuff from the ground. Like, you're probably all interested, like gold. Where'd the gold come from? They gotta dig it out of the ground. Well, what about oil? This is one of the old oil gushers from way back when. Those are valuable things for the world, right? Minerals and rocks, where do you get them from? And how do you find them? That's so interesting. Well, it turns out that we there's three categories of resources that we want to get out of the ground. There's metallic resources, some type of metal, iron, aluminum, copper, zinc, gold, magnesium, lead, all that cool stuff, right? Or non-metallic. Now these are just like the rocks, by the way, guys. Cement, sand, gravel, salt, clay, stone. We make our buildings out of these things. Uh, so these are just rocks, but they're useful and valuable, right? Depending on what you're doing, particularly for building things. And then we've got energy resources. We're going to just focus, frankly, on number one and number three, if you will, as we talk about how do you find it? So it comes back to the geology, the underlying geology of the area. So let's talk about the, the, uh, the metallic resources. The metallic resources are not all like spread all over the earth. They're, they're in certain pockets. So you've known this. You've studied history. You've talked about the gold rush of you know, the 1849 near San Francisco. There's all these big gold rushes, and they went to a certain place in the world. Why do they go to a certain place in the world? Because something happened geologically a long time ago, and it almost always has to do with water. Look at this word, hydrothermal vein deposits. Hydro means water, thermal means heat. So hot water. So the magma chamber gets somehow gets some water in it. And water, and you know, you ever like pour water on something that's super hot, it just instantly boils. This is like magma, super hot, liquid, cold, hot stuff, right? It's not cold. Liquid hot stuff, right? And what happens is, is it shoots up the, uh, these, these lines, if you will, these veins. And these veins can often, because the water somehow, I'm not sure, I don't understand the chemistry of it, but the water somehow attracts, particularly some of the more, uh, the higher density metals, the, the gold and, and such like that. And then what happens is the gold or whatever these minerals are tend to follow these veins. And so, you know, what the miner's trying to do is he's trying to dig down, hello, what's that? Trying to dig down a tunnel and then tap into that vein and boom, rich guy, right? So, uh, yeah. That's pretty interesting, right? So there's, it, often these happen to do with hydrothermal. Now, sometimes it's caused by a fault. Again, we'll learn about faults, earthquakes, that kind of a thing. But the faults sometimes create a way for the water to get down that creates these types of deposits. So I mean, long and short of this is that geologists are looking for places like this. And when they find them, then of course they find a place that's worth digging. And then bing, maybe they find something, maybe they don't, but when they do, they can become rich. Now let's talk about though the, when the natural gas, oil, this kind of stuff. What about the energy resources? Well, it turns out that energy resources always come from sedimentary rocks. You know, the history of, of Texas, of course, has a whole lot to do with sedimentary rocks and oil, right? What, what made Texas wealthy was um, discovering oil because Texas is filled with like, like thousands and thousands of feet of um, sedimentary rocks and it turns out that the and remember oil if you will or the coal same kind of an idea it comes from um, dead creatures and the dead creatures then to get trapped under the ground and then they find places but you need to find places where it's easy to get access and it turns out they often will be in um, kind of this kind of a uh, this shape uh, and it gets caught and what you do is you like drill well this is one of those classic wells and you want to find a place where you can, uh, it, it's trapped. So this is the reservoir rock. So it's like the oil is sort of here, but since oil is less dense than rock, it rises to the top and it gets caught in these domes. And then you, you just, you, you punch a hole in it and then you, you get it out. It's really not that hard. This is the, the, this kind of an angle. There's, there's several varieties. You also get ones here. The gas, by the way, would be the top because the gas would be even less dense. This is the natural gas. And then there's the same idea. This is a little different kind of a situation. They have a, they, you've got a cap rock, but the cap rock is something that oil can't penetrate. It's like, a, you think of a, like a concrete, it isn't concrete, but something that it can't penetrate. And it gets caught in pockets. And when you find the pocket, you have found You've struck it rich, as they say. And uh, different, sh there's also what they have, salt domes. In the salt domes, often you'll find the, the gas. It'll create an interesting, uh, you'll have a couple places where you want to put wells. Um, and there's some other places like this. Um, there's, I don't know, long story short is you've got sedimentary rocks. And then if you find the right sort of uh, 
shape and you've got some belief that it was a swampland where a bunch of things died over a long time ago, you can find your stuff. And so it's really about understanding the geology of the underlying ground and how they know what's under the ground. That's a topic for another segment. But they figure out what's under the ground and then they make a gamble and they say, let's drill here or there or here, or we're going to dig a hole here or we're going to dig a hole there. And when they find this stuff, then they have a mine and, or they have a, a well and they make stuff. And then, yeah, that's how our computers and our, our cell phones and the metals and all the stuff that we use, it all comes from digging it under the ground. Unless, of course, we're planting it and growing it. I mean, ultimately, there's kind of this saying that you either mine it or you grow it. I mean, you can't. That's all we have. Things we mine or we grow. Houston, we don't have a problem. We'll see you in class.